Rates of change of exponential and logarithmic functions. So here we are at the end of the chapter, and like with every other chapter you've done almost in this book, the last section always deals with rates of change. So by now I'm sure you're quite familiar with how it all works. The average rate of change is the slope of a secant, and the instantaneous rate of change is the slope of a tangent at a certain point. So let's go over um, a few of the questions in your textbook instead of talking again about how to find slope. You know how to do that. So let's do some of the questions and I've picked numbers 8, 9, and 11 in the Nelson textbook. So if you, um, if you don't have the Nelson textbook, you can just stop the video and take a look at the questions. If you do have Nelson, I suggest that you try them first and then come back. So a certain radioactive substance decays exponentially decay, so it's coming down, right? The percent P of the substance left after T years is given by this formula. Here it is. So the percentage at time T is 100% times 1.2 to the negative T. So it's decreasing. Determine the half-life of the substance. So if the substance has, get my calculator ready, if the substance has, starts with 100%, Half-life is going to happen when there's 50% of it left. So by setting the equation equal to 50, dividing by 100, so that's going to give you a half on this side, is 1.2 to the minus t. So now you're going to use your logarithm rules. So you can take the log of both sides. So the log of 0 0.5 is equal to and when I take the log, remember I'm going to bring the variable that I'm trying to solve for up front, negative t log 1.2. So now I'm going to divide both sides by log 1.2. Well, let's make it divide by negative log 0.12. And that gets rid of the negative sign. So I'm going to be solving exactly for t. So t is the log, let's get this on, the log of 0 0.5, uh, log 0.5 divided by log 1.2, and it's going to be negative, so that's going to give me the negative of this, which is approximately 3.8. So that means that in 3.8 years, half of the substance has decayed. Okay, so the next question says determine the instantaneous rate of change, rate of decay at the end of the first half-life period. So the end of the first half-life period occurs at 3.8 years. Now remember we did have a lot of decimals after that. So if I plugged in 3.8, I'm not going to get exactly um, the 0.5, right? It's not going to be exactly that number. So we're going, to, um, we're going to find the slope. We're going to have the slope, and we're going to use P at 3.8. And we're also going to find P at 3.81. Now remember, because we're using an equation, we can use a very small interval to estimate the instantaneous rate of change. So I'm going to find the slope between these two. So the instantaneous rate of change estimated is going to be p at 3.81 minus p at 3.8 and I'm going to divide it by 3.81 minus 3.8. In other words, this is just the y values divided by the change in x, right? So that's all we're doing, just the slope. So I'm going to plug in um, 3.81 and 3.8 into the original equation here. So let's clear this. I'm going to go 100 times bracket 1.2 to the power of negative 3.81 equals, and I get 49.925. Now remember I told you it wasn't going to be exactly 50 because we, we rounded Right? We didn't use the exact answer. Now you want to use a few decimals here. I would go for three. So if you don't use a lot of decimals, you're not going to get a very accurate answer because when you're dividing by 0 0.01 down here, you want to have something to work with. Right? 
Okay, so now I'm going to do 100 and I'm going to times that by 1.2 to the power of negative 3.8. And that's going to give me 50.016. 50.016. I'll probably have to shift this up for you in a second here, so just hang on. Okay, so there we have our calculations for 3.81, 3.8. I'm dividing by 0 0.01. So I'm going to do 49.925 minus 50.016, and I'm going to divide that by 0 0.01, and I get minus 9.1. Minus 9.1. So it's decaying. And you're not going to say decaying negatively. You're going to say it's decaying at 9.1. And that would be percent per year. Approximately uh, decaying at 9.1% per year. Now I didn't say negative. Remember because I said decaying. You could say it's changing at negative 9.1% per year if you want to do it that way. Okay, so that was number eight. Let's take a look at number nine. The population of a town is decreasing at 1.8% per annum. The current population of the town is 12,000. Write an equation that models the population of the town. Now remember when you're modeling populations, we use P at T, the population at time T. If you can't remember how to do these, you might want to do a quick review back in the Functions 11 course on um, exponential word problems, because we did a lot there. So you have your initial amount, which is 12,000, and it's changing at 1.8%. It's decreasing. Now remember that if you multiply this by 1, that would be like 100%. So 1.8 percent is 0 0.018 as a decimal. So this is going to be 1 minus 0 0.018 to the power of t. So 1 minus 0 0.018, that's going to give you um, 0.982, right? So we have 12,000 times 0 0.982. 982 to the power of t. Now, if for some reason you made a mistake and you just went 100 minus 1.8 and you put in 98.2 here, you'd find out very quickly that you're going to have a very crazy answer. So use your head and, and go back and fix that. So it's a decimal percent divided by 100. You did a lot of that with the finance course in grade 11 as well. Estimate the instantaneous rate of change in the population 10 years from now. So I need to know what is the population in 10 years. And then I'm going to figure out what is the population in some little interval after 10 years. So let's go first to find the population after 10 years. So we're going to find P at 10. P at 10 is equal to 12,000 times 1, oh, we'll put in the decimal, uh, 0 0.982 to the power of 10. And we're going to also do another small interval after that. So I'm going to use P at 10.1. Now, your teacher might want you to use a centered interval, like maybe 9.9 .9 and 10.1. Um, you should check with him or her to see um, how they expect you to solve these. In my class, if you used a very small interval, like a 0.1 interval, that, that's, um, that's a fairly decent um, calculation. Okay, so this is going to be 1,200, or 12,000, times 0 0.982 to the 10.1. Okay, so I'm going to do those two calculations first. So 12,000, do I do this? really fast, 0.982 to the power of 10. That gives me 10,006, 10,007. Okay, you don't have part peoples, 10,007. Okay, and now we're going to do the same calculation, 12,000 times, I'm going to put in brackets this time just because I want to, 
to the power of 10.1. Then I get 9988 or 9989, approximately 9989. Okay, now does that make sense? It says decreasing, so as time increases, it should be going down. Estimate the instantaneous rate of change means find the slope between these two points. So you really have, like you have a point here, 10 and 10,007, right? There's one point and your other point. Sometimes it's good to write this out and then you won't make a mistake. Okay, so instant, instantaneous rate of change estimated is going to be, so I take the 10.1, the, um, so I'm going to do 9989 minus 10007 divided by, and that's 10.1 minus 10. Okay, so let's see if we get what we get when we do that. So we'll, we're going to just put in the exact numbers that we had here minus 10, zero, zero, 007, and divide that by point zero, oh, not point zero 0.01, oh, whoops, divided by point 0.1, and we get negative 180, negative 180, approximately equal to minus 180. So the instantaneous rate of change in the population 10 years from now, that's at 10 years is approximately, therefore decreasing at approximately, approximately 180 people per year. Okay, don't forget your units when you give your solution and the negative means decreasing. Determine the instantaneous rate of change when the population is half its current population. So this is kind of like what you did in question eight, right? So we half of the current population would be 6,000. So you're going to set 6,000 equal to 12,000. Or you can maybe even just skip this step and just put 0.5 and solve for t. So 0 0.5 is equal to 0 0.982 to the t, take the log of both sides, log 0 0.5 is t times the log of 0 0.982. Let's just solve for t here, and then I'm going to let you solve for the instantaneous rate of change because we did one rate above, so I'm sure you can figure that out. So log 0 0.5, don't forget your brackets, divided by the log of 0.982. And that gives me 38. T is approximately equal to 38.2. So the instantaneous rate of change is um, 382. This is the time. This isn't instantaneous rate of change. This is just the time for the population to be half. So now you would do um, instantaneous rate of change. I'm just going to set up the equation for you. So it's going to be um, the population at 38.3 minus the population at 38.2 divided by 0 0.1. Okay, so that will give you the instantaneous rate of change. This is just the time. Remember, we solve for the time when, and then you have to do this. Okay, so that's number nine, and let's go to number 11. We can finish this lesson. Uh, just a little side note, this is the fourth time I think I've tried to do this lesson. I have really bad cold, and I kept <clears throat> coughing. Let's not even talk about that <laughs> before I start it again. Okay, as a tornado moves, its speed increases. The function SD equals 93 log D plus 65 relates the speed of the wind, S, in miles per hour, near the center of a tornado to the distance that the tornado has traveled d in miles. This obviously came from an American textbook. I'm surprised they didn't try to convert everything to kilometers per hour. So first thing says graph this function. So I set up a little graph here just so that we would have something to look at. Now, um, if you try to find the log of zero, you know that you're not going to get a solution, right? What's 
tend to, if I said, what is the log of zero? And this is a question that you often get on a test. Log zero equals what? Don't say one, because it says 10 to what power gives me zero? So there's no solution for that, right? Don't be fooled. You'll see one in my practice test for you. Okay, so let's, um, let's go by tens. So if I do the log of 10, log of 10 is one, right? Log of 10 is one, base 10. 10 to what power gives me 10? The answer would be one. 93 plus 65, so you just have to add those two numbers together. And that would be 158 at 10. So 158. So I'm already here. It's 100, 150. Okay, and let's do the log of, um, let's go all the way up to 100. What's the log of 100? That would be 2. 2 times 93. I hope you know what I'm doing. I'm just kind of doing this in my head. I get 251. So out here is going to be 251. It's about here. Okay, so this is obviously going to be coming up like this. Then it's going to start leveling off. Okay, so I hope I didn't do that too fast for you, but I think you see um, like S at 100. I'll, I'll write one of these out so you know what I did. Log 100 plus 65. So the log of 100 is just 2. Right, because 10, this is base 10. When Remember when there's no base written? 10 to the power of 2 gives me 100. So this is 93 times 2 plus 65. And that gave me 251. And that's what this point was supposed to be here. <coughs> okay, calculate the average rate of change for the speed of wind at the center of the tornado, center of the tornado, sorry, from mile 10 to 100. The average rate of change. So we're looking for the slope of a secant. So I just need to know what's S at 10. And I already did that for you. Let's write it out here. Okay, S at 10 is 93 log 10 plus 65. And log 10 is 1. 93 plus 65 was 158, right? 58, yeah. Okay, so S at 10 is 158. S at 100 was 251. So I have two coordinates, right? 10, 158, 100, 251. And I'm going to find the average rate of change, the A rock, I like to call it. So it's going to be 251 minus 158. That's rise over run, 100 minus 10. So 251 minus 158 divided by 90, 100 minus 10, is 1.03, approximately 1.03. And what are the units for that 1.03? <clears throat> that would be um, miles per hour, per hour, right? Miles per hour, per hour, because up here we had miles per hour. So 1.03 mph, oops, that's kind of a mess, mph per h, 1.03 miles per hour per hour, like that. Okay, estimate the rate at which the speed of the wind at the center of the tornado is changing at the moment it has traveled its tenth mile and hundredth mile. So um, it's the semantics here, right? changing at the moment it has traveled its 10th mile. That's asking for an instantaneous rate of change at the 10th mile. Okay, so um, that's it didn't ask you very obviously for that, but that, that's what they mean. At a certain point, at a certain moment, that's instantaneous rate of change. So I'm not going to do all that for you, but you would do the same thing here. So you could do S at 10 equals, uh, we had 158, and then you could find S at 10.1, or you could put 10.01 and subtract them and find the rate of change. And the same thing, you could do S at 100 and then S at 100.1, right? And then your instantaneous rate of change is just... S at 100.1. You're going to do so much of this in calculus. You'll be pros 
and I'm sure you are already. And this is 100.1 minus 100. That's your instantaneous rate of change. And that's your lesson for today. I hope you're finding these helpful. Please give me a thumbs up if you enjoyed the video. And don't forget to subscribe. All the best.